to tonight's regularly scheduled city council meeting. If I can ask you to all please rise for tonight's invocation. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend A.B. Sawyer with the First Baptist Church of Harrow. You will please remain standing for the national anthem. I'm sorry. Are or we're not going to sing, but we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. Watching too much football this weekend. Join me in prayer, please. All right, dear Father. Chamberlain, come to you in the name of your Son and our Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, asking your blessings and guidance over this council meeting tonight. We still stand amazed at the fact that you, Lord, know so well our town and community, the dedicated individuals who faithfully serve us, and you on our city council. Even though this is not a church meeting, we still purpose in our hearts to seek you presence, the will in your direction exclusively. We pray for our city council members as they seek your wisdom earnestly. We thank you in advance as they together seek your promises expectantly. And finally, we pray that you will inspire and yes, energize our members. They together seek solution, corrections, and even new directions on behalf of a great city, a great city. And we lift this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You guys want to stand up and sing the Star Spangled Banner one, one, one night? Too, but Give it a go. I, was, I thought that. I was calling the football game Friday night, so I called for the prayer and remained standing for the national anthem. Uh, it's a habit. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Sawyer. I won't make you sing, although I bet you can sing very well. All right, the first order of business will be to amend tonight's agenda. I will ask you to add as agenda item 20, a resolution authorizing the expenditure of $3,707 for uh, office furniture needed at City Hall. I make a motion to amend. Second. I have a motion and a second to amend the agenda as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to amend tonight's agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Okay, the agenda is amended. Thank you, Council. First order of business will be to approve the minutes of the September 28th regular city council meeting, work session and agenda meetings, and also the October 7th, uh, 2020 special called emergency city council meeting. Do you have any changes, additions, or deletions to those minutes, council? I make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. We have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the, submit the minutes as submitted, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, the minutes are approved. Thank you, Council. Does anyone have a mayor's report to present tonight? Okay. There's no mayor's report tonight. We will move to public participation for agenda items. If you would like to address the Council uh, pertaining to agenda items number five through now 20, if you'll please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. I will remind you that we do have another uh, opportunity for you to address the council uh, following the agenda for items that are not on the agenda. Okay. Seeing no one here for public participation for agenda items, we'll move on to council comments. Councilman Robinson. Uh, yes, uh, just a little bit of good news. I want to take this opportunity to thank Thomas Hospital and Drs. Brett Henderson, Dr. Digman, and Dr. Paula Drummond for successfully helping me and Alex welcome baby Alexandra Robinson last Thursday night. Six pounds, 12 ounces, just a, a, you know, fourth and final Robinson contribution to the city of Fair Oak. <laughs> That's all I got. All right. All right, Councilman Boone. Well, since I'm way past that stage, I have no comments. 
<laughs> I have just a couple of things to re reiterate. They were mentioned in tonight's work session, and that is uh, I want to let the citizens know that regular curbside pickup of recycling materials will resume on uh, next Monday, October the 19th, on your prescribed day. So uh, we can all recycle again. I know that I've been piling some of it up in my garage because I didn't want to throw it away. So put that recycling out on the curb again beginning a week from today. Uh, also, I want to remind citizens that if you hire someone to remove vegetation from your property that was not damaged or is not down uh, due to Hurricane Sally, that those contractors are required to remove that debris from your property. Uh, ask them not to put that on the curbside because we are uh, not supposed to pick up debris uh, that is uh, not hurricane uh, related. Uh, now. Uh, that's if you hire a contractor to do it. If you cut a tree on your property and you place it on a curb, it's technically supposed to be picked up by the city, but I would assume since we're paying for that, Richard, am I correct? They could put that out with their regular debris. So you can prune your, prune your trees and bushes. You just can't hire somebody to do it if it wasn't damaged. Uh, I'm going to allow you since you gave tonight's invocation. It's typically not allowed. I don't know. Does anybody know what pink ribbons on debris stands for, Richard? Is it out in front of are you? Do you live near Jay? Maybe uh, he had some pink ribbons. And if the city is celebrating in that way, I appreciate it. But I do, <laughs> I I do some, not. Yeah, know. I put it, I put it on my debris in, in honor. Of you know, please. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that might be. Yeah, no problem. Okay. That's my final comments. We will move on to item number five on tonight's agenda. Uh, this is the final adoption of an ordinance to repeal and replace ordinance numbers 1541 and 1435 and to establish the bylaws of the Fairhope Environmental Advisory Board. Uh, these were introduced at the September 28, 2020 City Council meeting. Council, any final comments on that? I know that they have been recommended by the uh, Environmental Advisory Board and also by Councilman Conyers, who's the council liaison to that board. Right, if I hear no questions, I will entertain a motion for final adoption. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for final adoption. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, clerk, will you call the question, please? Council President? Aye. Place two? Aye. Place five? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number six is the final adoption of an ordinance to amend ordinance number 843, amending chapter 20, article 1, section 20-14-1, removing the words except that bicycles may be pushed but not ridden on the pathway between Pure Avenue and Fells Avenue. Uh, this ordinance was introduced at the September 28, 2020 City Council meeting. And in a nutshell, it means that instead of pushing your bicycle, you may now ride your bicycle. So that language was removed. Uh, I will entertain a motion for final adoption. So moved. moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those, uh, clerk, please call the question, I'm sorry. Council President? Aye. Place two? Aye. Place five? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number seven is a resolution the City of Fairhope hereby strongly supports amendment number two and the proposed establishment of a toll authority to financially support expeditiously construct the expansion of the Baldwin Beach Express 2. Uh, council uh, we were approached by multiple people to support this. Uh, this would be the extension from the Baldwin Beach Express uh, where it terminates at I-10 uh, at I and extends this uh, kind of through the uh, eastern, northeastern reaches of the county up to Interstate 65. Um, I would say that um, you know, I initially had some reservations, but now I have no reservations about supporting this. The, the county uh, seems to support it uh, from the municipalities through the county commission and our state uh, delegation. Our representatives and our state senators all support this. Uh, also, the people that were opposed to uh, having only one method, and that be a told method to cross Mobile Bay, uh, also strongly support this measure. So it is. Uh, nothing like uh, a, a toll bridge across uh, the Mobile Bay. Uh, there are free routes and uh, this would allow for uh, uh, 
another route uh, should we have to have an evacuation. It would not be told during an evacuation. And uh, I just don't think that the citizens of Fairhope and the Eastern Shore are going to be affected by this at all unless they just choose to pay to, to drive down this road. I, don't, I think that it's pretty benign and that, that we should support this to, to help out the, the remaining areas of the county that do need it. Did I cover that well? Absolutely. Mr. Boone. Yes, you do. All right. With that, I'll entertain a motion to support amendment number so two. Moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, supporting amendment number two. Uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number eight is a resolution that the budget for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2020 be extended to allow the invoices and expenditures to continue as needed until the parts of the budget FY 2021 are adopted. Council, do you have any questions for Jill or Kim in regards to the budget and what that might entail? Okay. I'm good. Hearing no questions, we're good on that. I will entertain a motion to extend the budget to allow the invoices and expenditures to be paid so as moved. needed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number nine is a resolution to award the RFQ for engineering services contract for the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources grant. And you see those long numbers there. Restore Act Project number 396 sewer upgrade project phase one to Dewberry Engineering Incorporated with a total not to exceed fees of $1.21 million. That's broken down in an award of $610,000 for engineering design fees, $100,000 for other engineering fees, and $500,000 for construction engineering inspection services subject to review and approval by ADCNR and the city attorney prior to execution. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Jessica Walker with the city to give us more information. Uh, she gave us a, a quick briefing in the work session. And we also have uh, Andy Bobie with Dewberry Engineers here. Should we have uh, questions for Andy? Uh, he's back in the back of the room here to ask. I, I will say this is being paid for, as we stated in the resolution, by Restore Act money. Also, some people refer to that as BP money. So uh, this is not a cost uh, to the city. Uh, Andy? This is a pretty big deal. Do you mind giving us just the, the very quick synopsis of what the phase one will entail for the sewer upgrade? Yes, sir. Um, thank you for letting me uh, speak. Uh, this was an opportunity for Restore to fund some sewer improvements throughout the city. Uh, there are several places that have deficiencies. Uh, the RFQ mentioned 13 different lift stations, 42,000 linear feet of sewer gravity sewer, 10,000 linear feet of uh, sewer laterals, all to be evaluated, uh, potentially lined, doing point repairs, uh, doing repairs to manholes that are deteriorated or potentially replacing them, uh, and then upgrading uh, 13 different lift stations so that they are both functional and a little more user friendly for the city staff. With the uh, the work that we've been doing within the city, uh, it just worked out that uh, we we had a, a great plan that was submitted and were selected. Okay, and you have a, a, a I think in total 52,000 linear feet. Uh, so in, in what you're doing uh, in the engineering phase, you would determine what would need to be done to this 52,000 linear feet. Should it need to be that's that's cured correct. in place pipe or replaced or but that they, they, they want to make sure that people don't don't that, think this, this is not paid for that no, repair that, or reconstruction it's, of it's, those. it's going to be evaluation we have to evaluate all of these pieces of infrastructure and then determine what the proper upgrade is going to be we believe that majority of the piping is going to be CIPP piping just a line to address some uh, infiltration throughout the system uh, but there are going to be places where we've we're going to have to dig up, totally replace lines of sewer, manholes, lift stations. Um, but the, the first big piece is going to be uh, an intensive amount of evaluation. Okay. Any questions for Andy? 
I know that uh, Andy, you guys have been involved with these sewer grades for upgrades for quite some time, and this is not this is not your first rodeo with the city. No, I appreciate you guys what y'all been doing and putting a lot of you know effort into this. And I know that the citizens, when this is all done, will be very proud. So thank you. Very thankful for the opportunity. I would I would like to say that I was part of the uh, selection process. It's very well put together, very well planned out, and I think we. Uh, got the best engineer in the, for the job and I also would like to add the fact that uh, to me this is probably one of the most important phases of the entire sewer upgrades that we will be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second thing is Andy you and I talked about making sure those lift stations run when there's no power. Absolutely. I'd like to make sure put on record here that we get that done. Absolutely. And installed so that when the, another storm comes uh, it won't be as much those bad boys will still be running. Yes sir. All right. To find some uh, more uh, reliable components for some of these lift stations. You know, when we have some of these SSOs, you know, people get really upset with us, and you all know that, council members, that we, we know of that you know, firsthand. And, uh, you know, I always say if it's man made, it's prone to failure, and uh, it just seems like it just it bites us every day. But, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is we have what, 80 something lift stations now? Is that right, Michael? 79, I think. 79 lift stations. And so, you know, um, if you think about how often you, your car breaks down, if it only broke down, with, you needed a repair for anything once a year, uh, that would be, you know, a lift station needing something on average of more than once a week. So uh, we appreciate it. It's, it's, a, it's a monumental task. Okay, well, we, and, the, and the lift station is just one component of it. Absolutely, and just and just so you know, this this project isn't set to be. It's not a quick duration project. This is going to be over the span of a couple of years to get all this implemented and put in place. Okay, excellent. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you, Council. Do you have any other questions for Andy or Jessica? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to award the RFQ. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, thank you, Council. Once again, thank you, Andy. Item number 10 is a resolution to award a bid for a root pruner and aerator, Verdict Quake 2516 for the Quail Creek Golf Course for the Rec Department to Redexum North American Incorporated with a total bid proposal of $16,200. Pat is here to uh, answer any questions. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? I was trying to find out. Uh, maybe if I look at that last page, I'll see it. Uh, this is uh, in the draft budget, so make, make sure that <clears throat> you note that you, you still put it in there because it'll it'll reduce the uh, amount to uh, to expend after that. So I, I have no doubt that you need it, but make sure it's in the budget. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor to award the bid, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 11 is a resolution to reject all submittals for proposals for the professional planning services for the Ferrop area, community-based comprehensive land use plan, and re-advertise the RFP at the recommendation of the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural <coughs> Resources. Uh, we'll also mention that uh, this is only for the land use sections of these proposals. Uh, the GS uh, portions of these proposals, there were two complete bids and uh, those are being evaluated. So it's only for the land use. Uh, our city attorney, Marcus uh, McDowell, also agreed that these should be put out uh, for rebid uh, and as did the staff, as also uh, did uh, ADCNR. So uh, with that, I will ask for a motion to reject all submittals for the professional planning services for the comprehensive land use plan. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Item 12 is a resolution the City Council approves the selection of Terra Explorations Incorporated to perform archaeology monitoring for the Arts Alley Transit Hub project and hereby authorizes Mayor Karen Wilson to execute the associated contract with a not to exceed limit of $10,000. This was also discussed in the work session, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the selection. So moved. 
Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 13 is a resolution that Mayor Wilson is hereby authorized to execute a contract for extension number one and bid number 38-19 for perennial ryegrass seed for the rec department with site one landscape supply for an additional one year per the terms and conditions of the original contract. The cost is $58.07 per 50 pound bag with an estimated 300 bags for a total bid proposal of $17,421. Pat, is this, again, once again, looking forward to the 2021 budget? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, you can't miss the planning season, Council, so we got it on there. I'll entertain a motion for the purchase of the seed. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 14 is a resolution the City of Fairhope approves the negotiated pricing for HVAC parts and supplies from Wittichin Supply Company. The cost is unknown until the actual parts or replacement is needed. The amount spent in FY 2020 was in excess of $47,000. And as our treasurer, Ms. Creech, explained in the work session, um, you know, we, these are our negotiated prices. They gave us pretty much exactly the same as those that were negotiated by uh, you know, a large buying group in the state of Alabama. We were also reminded that we have to go through this supplier for those brands of products uh, for which we need uh, the repairs made uh, in accordance with uh, state law. I see uh, maintenance supervisor Lance Cabinets in the back of the room. Should you have any questions for him? And Lance, I uh, appreciate you being here. So if you have any questions, uh, we can call him up. If not, I will entertain a motion to accept the negotiated pricing. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, the motion carries, thank you, council. Item 15 is a resolution the City of Fair Hope approves the procurement of a grit classifier, auger, and guides for the sewer department from Jim House and Associates as a sole source provider for Schreiber LLC in the state of Alabama and the state of Florida. Panhandle, that is. The units must fit into our existing standardized system and are exempt from formal bid pursuant to the Code of Alabama. The cost will be $9,519, and this is also included in the fiscal year 2021 draft budget. Any questions for Mr. Allison? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion uh, to, um, I'm sorry, I got off on another subject in my mind. I'll, uh, to award the bid to Jim House and Associates. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any uh, further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. What I do sometimes, Council, I'll get my iPad ahead of my notebook and I'll look over there and see a different number and question what I just said. So uh, anyway, if you want to know how I do that sometimes. Item 16 is a resolution of City of Fairhope vote to purchase two 6 inch by 18 inch and one 8 inch by 18 inch Plitco repair split and sleeves for the gas department from Port City Pike and authorizes procurement without formal bid based on the option allowed by the Code of Alabama. Cost will be $21,974.70. As Mr. Allison explained also in the work session. So moved. Second. You have a motion to second. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay. Motion carries, thank you, Council. Item 17 is a resolution of City of Fairhope vote to procure three greenhouses that were destroyed by Hurricane Sally for the Horticulture Department of the Public Works. The items are available for direct procurement through the Source Well Purchasing Co-op, which has been nationally bid, therefore does not have to be let out for bid with a cost of $40,405.50. This is unbudgeted, but it should be reimbursed through FEMA. I will say that it will also, there will be a portion of this probably uh, reimbursed by uh, our insurance uh, and the parts that are not will uh, be submitted to FEMA. So we'll be paying maybe a portion of the deductible and a portion of our uh, FEMA match uh, for that. But 
certainly be less than forty thousand four hundred five dollars and fifty cents. So I'll entertain a motion to procure the greenhouses. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to procure the three greenhouses. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 18 is a resolution of the City of Fair Oak vote to procure repairs to the accident damaged engine number 914, a fire suppression vehicle at fire station number one for the Fair Oak Volunteer Fire Department from Sunbelt Fire, fire Incorporated, a sole source distributor and service provider for E1 products for our region. This is an unbudgeted cost of $11,930.91, but it will be paid for our, by our insurance less our insurance deductible. So we've got to we got to fix the damaged fire engine, so I recommend we approve this unbudgeted cost. So I'll entertain a motion. So second. I have a motion and a second to pay for the repairs. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, the expense is approved. Thank you, Council. Item number 19 is a resolution of the City of Fair Oak vote to approve this unbudgeted procurement for citizen service software to be used by the planning and building departments from online solutions and authorizes procurement based on the option allowed by the Code of Alabama 1975. The amount for this procurement, training setup, and migration integration fees for the first year is $111,500, uh, and the initial expense will be funded through the CARES Act. I'll also add that the recurring cost will be uh, $37,000. $500 per year. Uh, council in uh, earlier uh, in tonight's work session or agenda meeting, I uh, questioned Mr. Cortinez about the need for this and whether or not the Munis uh, software uh, could handle this because I thought that we may have a platform that we were already paying for and we don't need this uh, additional expense. I don't know if it's just me. Uh, but I thought Mr. Cortinez did a pretty good job of explaining the need for this. Uh, so any objection that I may have had to uh, passing this or any questions that I had to pass this tonight have kind of been alleviated uh, for me uh, and, and hopefully for you too. So uh, does anybody have any further questions for Mr. Cortinez or for Ms. Creech? I have one. Let's assume for a moment that this is put in place in two years from now. We pay the 37000 each year, and all of a sudden, two years from now, they, we decide this isn't going to work. Is CARES Act, are they going to want their money back? Or is there a time frame on that money? Or I don't have, know that that's really been yeah. defined by anything. I know that there are multiple departments that are using CARES Act to get this kind of software ball in county is. So we're not the only ones doing this. So it's not a time frame. I'm just making sure there's not a time frame. But the only time frame we know of is the implementation. Kim, I'm gonna. Ask, I have a hard time hearing you without you being at the mic. If I can ask you, please to, to come up. If if we will untape you there. He's such a big help. So the CARES Act that is allowing for this to reimburse is that we're using this as remote work. And what we, when we sent in a request, which was for a different brand of software doing the same thing, it was allow citizens not to have to come in to our office to submit the plans. Also, if an employee needs to work from a remote spot, this will put the technology in place. So that's how we're getting with the CARES Act to be able to utilize these funds. So with us being able to prevent the spread, you know, that's what this money's right. for, is prevent, respond, um, that's what this software will help our staff that doesn't have to come into the office to get these plans if we shut down our office, or prevent a citizen putting the plans outside our door, our office is closed, and for them to have to, you know, turn in. I think that's what was going on prior to when, when the office was shut down, um, this is going to step the city of Fairhope into um, an area where citizens have those plans, probably already electronic, and be able to submit those plans to us. Uh, it seems the reason then, Councilman Boone, I'm just guessing here that if we were to be fortunate enough to get a vaccine for uh, the coronavirus or 
you know, the pandemic was to subside and people feel comfortable face to face, they couldn't expect us to continue using that software if we chose not to because the premise behind the CARES Act is to give people a way to do it remotely. And therefore, you wouldn't necessarily have a need, so you could just say we don't have a need for it and, and eliminate it. I, I would say that we're probably pretty safe without having to reimburse the government for something purchased under the CARES Act because we all want to, we all want the coronavirus to end. So, does that make sense? Yeah. I just, you know, when I look at things, I like to look at the worst case scenario. And worst sure. case is if you decide not to use it, I don't want something hidden line in there other than you, if we don't use it 10 years or something, you, we owe the money. But That's I would a good think question. Moving, moving forward, as for staff, I mean, it's going to, once people get used to doing, you know, online, you know, the issue of permits to get an AC permit that, you know, these builders can do these simple permits online, they're not going to want to now have to come back to our office, you know, to be able to get that permit. To, to let you know, that was a very heavy complaint we received from citizens and contractors not having that remote feature and like I think I've told you before we're one of the few sizable municipalities that does not have that ability yeah I'm not, again I'm not I'm not so I don't have a problem with the premise of it I'm just making sure there's not a hidden item in there that it would cost us or bite us in the butt later on down the road if something should happen it would have to be a very extreme case for us to decide not to use it so. right okay yep I mean, what we have to be able to meet is the deadline right. for December 30th to have it incurred, implemented, um, to be able to meet the definition, to be able to get reimbursed on these funds. Okay. Okay, Council. Uh, I will entertain a motion for the purchase of the So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the purchase of the software, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 20 on tonight's agenda is a resolution that was added to the meeting at the beginning of tonight's meeting. Uh, and I'll just read it. It's very simple. It says, be it resolved by the governing body of the City of Fairhope, Alabama, that the City Council hereby approves and authorizes the expenditure for office furniture for City Hall, and you see a uh, detailed uh, a purchase order there, uh, and you see some quotes in there, $3,707, there's a credenza, writing desk, and some chairs, and lamp, and writing desk, just some things that are needed to equip City Hall's offices, so I'll entertain a motion for that expense, please. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the purchase of that furniture. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Public participation, if you have anything else to bring forth before the council that wasn't on tonight's agenda, or maybe it was on tonight's agenda, you may come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. I think everybody here is staff except for one member of the press. And I want to thank you for being here, hanging in there. Okay, seeing no one for public participation, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. We're adjourned. Thank Thanks. you, Councilor.